Hi there and welcome to another workout for you to row along to where I row a session on this machine and you do exactly the same session on your machine at home or in the gym of course and you row along with me, hence the name Roller. Okay. Now today's one is going to be about top end power. This is great training for like a 500 meter or a 1k where you're needing to put in that pace and hold it and kind of push through that point where everything's kind of saying you might want to slow down and you just say no 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 I'm going to keep on going. All right. So that's what today's session is. This is perfect for 1K training, which is why it's being used as week three, session five of the 1K plan. But don't worry, you don't have to be part of the 1K plan to enjoy this row. It's the same with all of my rows, whether it's part of a plan or not, you can just jump in and do the single workout, all right? So today what we're gonna do is five 90 second intervals with three minutes rest in between. So you've got like a two to one ratio here, or a one to two, depending how you look at it, of work to rest. So you put in those 90 seconds of effort, and then you get three minutes to recover and then you do it again and again and again five times and you're done okay but the point is is pace and stroke rate you want to get the stroke rate up and you want to get the pace up now if you are part of the 1k plan hopefully two sessions ago was week three session three and that was a tough old boot of a workout that was the 20 times one minute uh, where we went from 24 all the way up to 32 strokes a minute and hopefully through that workout you found a current sweet spot that was your fastest point okay so maybe it was the 30 strokes a minute was your fastest and you couldn't quite hold the 32 um, or or whatever so what I want you to do is to aim as you start this workout for whatever your fastest point was in that one do you get you get what I'm saying so that if if it was the 30 strokes a minute, I want you to do this workout starting off at 30 strokes a minute and at whatever pace you were managing. So for me, I was doing 32 strokes a minute and I was hovering between 139 and 140 pace. So that's what I'm going to be aiming for today. I'm going to see if I can go faster, but to be honest, uh, this should really max you out. So it's going to be a, just a case of trying to hold on to that pace until the end. That last interval, if you want to absolutely gun for it, fine, do. But I don't want you to do it through the first four, like fly and die and um, and not able to continue through the workout. Kind of no point in that. All right, so that's what we're aiming for. So really, ultimately, if you want just to kind of a global pace, you're aiming for your 1K stroke rate and your 1K pace. However, if you're on this 1K plan, then that week three, session three, is a great indicator of where you should kind of be for today's workout, all right? Huge long intro today, but I just wanted to get all of that out there. Now, because this is a spicy workout, we're gonna do our five minute warm up, okay? Which just pushes through intensity and will hopefully get you ready for the main session. But before we can even get there, we have to set up our machine. I know, it's like I don't set it up every day. So on a concept two, and that means going to your drag factor first and setting that to where you want it to be. If you don't know about drag factor, I've got a video up here on the channel. If you know how to set it, but you don't know where to set it, I recommend right about 130 and you can adjust from there. If you know absolutely nothing about it, just set your lever between four and five, okay? Too low isn't a problem, too high is a problem. If you're on a non-concept two, just set that resistance or weight or water or the hamster running around so that you get a nice good feel from the stroke, but you don't have to heave against it to get the thing moving. I'm going at a million miles an hour. Next up, if you can, adjust your monitor to height so that you don't have to look up, you don't have to look down, so it should be at eye height, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> and finally, if you can set the foot stretcher height, then please, <laughs> keep on saying the word height, then please get it to a point where you can get to the front of the machine with your shins pointing vertically, okay, straight up. If you are set too high, it can be a little bit tough to get there. If you're set too low, you can go scooting straight past. That causes power leaks and possible injury. <sighs> there we go. So. I really should just say, click here for the intro. Um, so uh, we're going to do this, we're going to start off 20 strokes a minute for the first minute and then we're going to gradually increase our pace as we go through. But just follow me, listen to me, uh, and we should all be good. If you Obviously, if you need to take a longer warm-up before today's session, please do pause the video, carry on warming up, and make sure you're ready. But for this five minutes, we're going to go in three, two, one. Let's begin. So 20 strokes a minute. And all I want you to think about is pushing enough power from your legs that you can just feel that power coming up into your arms. So really it's almost just like standing up, okay? So say you went down into a squat position and you were just standing up. That's the push I want you to put in right now. And this gives you a chance to think about the timing between pushing your feet into the foot plates and your hands picking up the flywheel and what I mean is that point when the handle connects 
to the flywheel or whatever your machine uses. You want to push at the same time your hands connect. It's as simple as that. And then if you can have a forwards lean to the front of the machine and straight arms, that makes it all the better. Once you've got that timing down, just think about just a little bit more of a push from your legs. Remember, this is a warm up. So really all you're doing is for the first couple of minutes working with just enough intensity to feel your heart rate drift up a little bit. Your breathing will increase. But you'll be able to still have a conversation. You certainly won't feel as though you're working hard. You're just letting your body go through the motions. That tilt forwards, tilt backwards at the end of the stroke. So forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards. And pushing with those legs, connecting to the arms, keeping those arms nice and straight as you push the power into the machine, holding that forwards tilt and then only swinging when you're about halfway through the leg drive and then pulling the arms into a finish. Remember, rowing isn't a pulling motion really. You're hanging off the handle at the front and then pulling at the back. Right, so in about three strokes time, we're gonna take five power strokes of the legs. Keep the stroke rate the same. Let's do one more. So here we go. Power. Power. One more. Let's take five easy. Back down to the pace you were doing before. Two more. One more. Let's go power again. Really feel that connection as you come forwards. One more. There we go. Nice and easy. For five. Two more. One more. Here we go, five hard. This is really priming your muscles for the main session without, there you go, take it nice and slow again, without really overstraining your muscles or your cardio system. Two more, one more, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and let's paddle home for the last 15 seconds. Two more. Last one. Right, so like I said, if you want to carry on rowing, make sure that you're properly warm up if five minutes wasn't enough. And please do, don't just stop because I've stopped. Um, however, you will have time while I recap what today's session is. So you could continue to row. Just make sure and can stop and have a quick drink before that first session. Give you a second, yourself just a few seconds to recover. But otherwise, uh, just keep on moving up and on the rail. Have a quick drink while I explain one more time what we're doing today.
Okay, so today's session is five 90 second intervals with three minutes rest in between. And you're gonna be doing them up at round about your 1K rate and pace or the fastest pace and rate that you managed in week three, session three, if you've been rowing part of the 1K plan. And now those folks that have been part of the plan, hopefully you'll have seen the progression of this session five of the week as, as the weeks have gone on. Because week one, session five, was only three two minute intervals with four minutes rest in between, okay? So 30 seconds longer effort per interval than today for sure, but an extra minute rest. Whereas today we're doing five of them and we've got a minute less rest, but the effort part is 30 seconds less, okay? So you're gonna be working for slightly shorter, but you're gonna do more intervals and you're gonna get less rest. So all kind of can, comes into the same kind of uh, pot of mischief that I've got planned for, for you. But the point is, is that over the course of the plan so far, your pace, your fitness, your ability to hold on to this uh, speed should have improved. Your mental kind of ability to go, you know what, I'm get, maybe getting a little bit fatigued, but I know I'm about to get a rest, so I'm going to push through. All of that should have improved so that today is going to be a good session. That You'll be able to row it faster than you did that week one, session five, hopefully, and it will feel better. You'll be like, yeah, I've got this. It's only, yeah, you get what? I don't need to kind of labor the point here, do I? So if you've been doing some light rowing, Stop now and have a quick drink. Because we're about to get into our first interval. So I'm going to be aiming for around about 32-ish strokes a minute. I may drift up to 34, who knows? It just depends how I feel. And my pace I'm aiming for is around about 140, okay? Admittedly, I'm not super race warm. Um, so it may take a while for me to get into it. This first interval might be a little bit more and then the next one to be better. Who knows? That's the whole point of doing this together so we can ex explore how our body reacts to this kind of thing. Right, I think, <laughs> I think I've delayed the start of this <laughs> long enough. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be tough, but it'll be fine. So get your big boy pants, your big girl pants on, and let's get into this. In three, two, one, go. <clears throat> So get up there, rate-wise. Get that power from your legs into the machine. You'll notice my first stroke is a full stroke. I don't stab in to the machine. For 30 seconds gone. Keep your rate high. Keep pushing the machine away with your feet. Halfway. Arms straight. Let the power Blood into the machine. Less than 20 to go. Ten seconds. Three, two, one. Ooh. There we go. Ooh. So, with any luck, you didn't feel you had to stop there. It was definitely hard work. My heart rate was up. There we go. Didn't actually see where it finished. 79% of max, that's probably about 150 something. Uh, but you should at least have felt you had a bit more in you. Hopefully, because bearing in mind that's supposed to be 1k rate and pace. So if you got to the end of that 90 seconds and were like, I can't put anything else into this, then when it comes to rowing a 1k, 
you've probably got at least that amount of work to go. But that was, for me, 451 meters. I just did those 90 seconds. So I've definitely got that and a little bit more to go when it comes to rowing a 1K. Oh, right, make sure oh, if you have any response in your glutes, something I have from where my sit bones have been squishing my glutes, just lift. If you just literally lift your bum cheek up off the seat, do the same on both sides and just have a little bit of a squirm. It'll change the point in your muscles where your sit bone is pressing down and squishing your, your glute or your, yeah, your gluteus maximus. Right, a minute to go, I'm gonna have a drink. So, I have essentially had my heart rate's down to 69. Is that right? Yeah. I've essentially recovered. Got a little bit of zing in my legs, but from a cardio, from a breathing point of view, I've now effectively recovered after that first interval. So it'll be interesting to see what my kind of drift will be as we go through these intervals, okay? Because the next one's coming up in just under 30 seconds. If you want to protect your back on that first stroke, when we get to 15 seconds to go, start doing some light rowing, okay? Which is coming up now, okay? So just get moving, that gets the flywheel moving, and you're not having to start a completely stopped flywheel. Otherwise, we're going in seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, go. <clears throat> so same again. <clears throat> Try to get right up to rate and pace. Remember, you need to get through all five intervals. So don't overdo it. But still, make sure to keep rate and pace powerful. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Three, two, one. Ah. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Nice to see. Similar pace though. Uh, I was 452 that time versus 451 in the first interval. So, but it definitely felt a little bit harder. You can tell for the fact that I think we got to not that far into that interval when I completely stopped talking to you. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. But like I keep saying, this is also my training and these top end things. If I was to be able to continue to do my usual waffle the entire way through, I'd have to back off a few seconds, and nobody wants that. Oh, it's not going to help me develop, and it doesn't really add any real weight to me saying I'm going through this with you. 
right now I'm going through this with you, don't worry. If you're a little bit tired, so am I. That's fine, because we're two down. After our next one, we'll be past halfway, which is good news. Okay, in, we're gonna have a drink in two seconds time, a minute to go. So heart rate is down to 79 this time, so it's 10 beats higher than it was at this stage after the first interval. But, and it's definitely, my breathing hasn't recovered quite as well as it had the, the last time round. So it'll be interesting to see whether I can continue to hold on to this pace. And don't worry if your pace drops off, okay? That's fine, because you'll be able to start off at the right pace. And then it's about trying to hold on. But if you can't hold on and you need to slow down by just a second, then slow down by a second. 15 seconds to go, but I don't want you to make that decision. It's only if fatigue sets in and you can't hold it on. Hold on to it, sorry. Six, five, four, three, two, one, go. Straight up to rate and pace. <clears throat> Try to keep that technique flowing. No pause at the front. Just keep it forwards, backwards. Push with the legs. Pull at the finish. Thirty seconds. Fifteen. Three. Two. One. Uh, certainly not talking as much makes it a tiny bit easier but it's certainly not easy <laughs> wow Three done, two to go. It's always easier on the downhill, but watch out for the trap of the second last one, where it's easy to get, to get into a weird mindset of, oh no, I've still got one more to go when it gets a wee bit tough. So what happened to me in the week three, session three one, where the second last interval, just my brain went and I just couldn't keep the power up. And so I'd averaged a lot slower than the other 32 strokes a minute sections. But then the last one, because it's your last interval, got all the power in the world to finish. So try to keep honest with yourself, okay? I don't want what I said about allowing yourself to slow down to be a, an excuse, something you can hang on to and go, well, he said I could slow down if I'm tired. It's not about you're tired so you can slow down. It's about you can't keep the pace. It's about you're literally not able to hold it on, hold on to that pace any longer. So you have to slow down by one or two seconds to complete, okay? It's not a mental thing, it's a physical thing. Right, minute to go, have a drink. Oh, 
I'm down to 74 heart rate. So I actually recovered a little bit more than I had after interval two. That's assuming, I'm making the mistake of assuming that my heart rate strap is correct. It has been playing up and it's definitely different. Well, actually it's now in line with my Apple Watch, so. Okay, less than 30 seconds to go. Two more intervals to go. Remember how this feels, how the recovery in between feels, how you're ready for the next one, okay? That's really important on this session. 15 for those doing light rowing. 10 seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Push. <clears throat> Remember your breathing. A good pattern. Oxygen in. CO2 out. In a good pattern. Halfway. <laughs> Thirty seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, that's better. Uh, oh. Just a second. Uh, so, that was back to the same pace as interval two. So I've gone 139.8, then 0.6, then 0.8, and then 0.6 again. Which pleases me. To have managed to get back in line pace-wise on the interval that I said is the tough one mentally you just have to not look too far ahead you just think 24 strokes 16 8 done when you hit that halfway point You certainly don't think, oh man, I've got a whole other one of these to go. It's like doing a 1K. You can look at the first 500 as just a 500 meter row. It's great. As long as you're not then thinking, or while you're through that going, oh, I've got another 500 to go. Because that just then is mentally gonna mess with you instead of actually help you. So, so it's best just to concentrate on locking in your technique for at least the first 30 seconds of these intervals. Right, a minute to go, have a drink. Our last one is coming up. My heart rate's up at 85, so a good 10 BPM higher than it was at the end of interval three. That did work a tiny little bit harder, I suppose, so. Oh, 30 seconds to go, get yourself prepared. Last one. Let's see if we can do the first minute at this pace 
and then see what we can do in the last 30 seconds, okay? Oh. 15 seconds to go if you want to do that light rowing. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, push. Last one. Still remain in control, but if you want to try to finish this one faster than the previous four. A minute to go. Fingers hooked over the handle. Okay, push harder. Now rate up. Both together. Yeah. Oh. Everything inside me wants to climb off and lie on the ground now but I can control oh how did you get on let's take a moment I Finished 138.4 in the last one. So that was a second faster uh, than any of the previous ones. Actually 1.2 faster. And I got down to 130 for the last stroke. I think it's if you spool back and watch the last like 16 strokes from that 30 seconds point, I know my technique would have fallen apart, but that's one of the beauties of indoor rowing is that you can just close your eyes and go for it and do whatever it takes to get the pace up. There's no way I could row the entire session the way I did the last four strokes just then but I could roll those last four strokes that way. Right, in fact, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start this three minute cool down with my feet out of the straps. So three minute cool down, first minute, kind of like how we started the warm up, and then we'll do single leg work afterwards, or you can just take the whole three minutes as light rowing to cool down. So here we go. In three, two, one, go. So, all you're doing here is much like the warm-up where you are going through the motions, moving your body in the right sequencing, trying to think about technique. In the warm-up, that was to get your body ready for the workout. In this cool-down, it's just to slide it into neutral, get ready for the fact you've just stopped all that top end effort because <clears throat> you want to give your body a chance to just relax 
and not go full nothing. <sighs> right, in three strokes time, I'm gonna put one foot on the floor. One more. Okay, but I'm gonna continue to row with just that one leg still up on the foot stretcher. And that lets me focus on the push from this leg. I can think about just getting shins to vertical and no more. And that forward tilt to the front of the machine. One more, then we'll swap feet. Continue. See, seamless because I was rowing without my feet even strapped in. That was even quicker than the days of rowing in socks. Strapless rowing is really helpful for your technique if you are the type that pulls your feet on the foot straps. One more here and then put both feet in the foot plates and then legs straight, row with your back and arms. You shouldn't have to be strapped in here because <clears throat> that rock over your body, the power should be connecting into the machine rather than sending you backwards. And then we'll take two more here. Then we're gonna to roll to the front, but we're not gonna strap in again. So I want you to just arm straight forward lean and press enough, okay? that you're holding your arm straight forward tilt, but not so hard that you have to recoil or that it causes a problem from being strapless. So the point here where my legs are having to kind of soak up that power is effectively when I would swing over my back in a full stroke. So that's a great way to learn that feel. So if you're strapless, just pushing out lightly with your legs, this should be okay. If you push too hard here, then you will end up flying backwards. But the whole point here is that you're concentrating on arm straight and a forward tilt as you get your legs in. Okay, so see how I'm not tilting backwards here at all or bending my arms at all. There we go. Oh, my throat's dry after today's main session, so I'm gonna have a quick drink, and then we'll start discussing stretching. If you don't have the time, and you're about to scurry off, at least stretch your quads and your hamstrings at one point, but not in the shower, because I don't want you to fall over. Or, there's Stretchy John. He'll take you through a bunch of stretches in a much cleaner way <laughs> than I'm about to, because I'm gonna show you how to do it if you're just sitting on the machine, if you don't have a stretching mat next to you or anything. So put your feet back in, straps nice and loose so that you can bring your toes up and have a little gap between your feet and the foot plates. Then hands in the air, fold forwards. And then this should, as you fold it forwards, give you a nice stretch in the hamstrings. Depending on how far forwards you come with your hands, provided you're still just folding forward, you're not just bending your upper or lower back, uh, how much of a bend in your knees you have, whether you have your toes pointing up or pointing forwards, many, many, many different ways to kind of adjust this stretch and where it hits. If it's basically just getting you under the knees, you're, all you're really doing is stretching your tendons and not actually your hamstrings, so adjust as necessary. Next up, glutes, put one leg up on the rail, other foot comes over your knee into the crook of your knee, Bring this knee across your body, hold it in place with your other arm, and then rotate into your back arm that's holding onto the back of the machine. Okay, you can see it. Obviously podcast people, you can't see it. But hopefully, I have described it in such an accurate way that you are like, I can see him. I can imagine his Adonis-like being rotating, glistening as he goes back. And then they'll fire up a YouTube video and go, oh, that's what he looks like. <laughs> yes, because I have the voice of an Adonis. <laughs> no, don't. Right, other leg, or other glute. Remember that rotation into your glute, how much you kind of rotate into it, how much you, like where you put 
the foot that's resting against the crook of your knee, all that kind of stuff. This is how you adjust the amount of a stretch you're getting here. But the important thing is, is that you end up with a stretch in your glutes. Let's do our quads next. So you can hold on to the monitor to steady yourself, flick up your foot, hold your heel against your backside and give it a little pull while keeping your shoulders, hips and knee in line. And you should find your quad gets a stretch. If it's higher, if it's up in your hip flexor, chances are you're kind of doing something weird posture wise, you're pushing things forwards. Um, and that's not going to help. You want this to be about the quads, not about hip flexors. Other leg. Is it going? Oh, oh, almost. No, there we go. <laughs> oh dear. I could have been a ballet dancer, couldn't I? With balance skills like that. Be yeah, other leg. Do exactly the same thing. Try and keep that line between your shoulder, your hip and your knee. Hold that heel up against your backside and make sure you've got a nice stretch in your quad rather than your hip flexors, because hip flexors is what we're doing next. Now I'm gonna do the same again, we're gonna left leg first, but I'm gonna do this one with this knee off the ground. So what you wanna do is go into a lunge on your forward leg and then sink your lower leg and at the same time push your hip forwards, okay? So you might have to sink that knee a little bit further and then keep Again, keep your posture good, because I think when I've been putting, putting lots of weight into my front leg, it's because I've been leaning over it. But like today, I'm perfectly fine like this. So I'm not really having the big problems I was having out of the leg that was coming forward. So I think I must have been doing it slightly wrong before. But then by pushing this hip forwards, you should get a nice stretch out of your hip flexor. Now I'm gonna swap legs and do this one with my knee on the ground. So basically the same thing. This knee or the up knee is over my, the top of my ankle got a 90 degree bend on the back one, and then everything shifts forwards as I push this, my, the hips you can't really see, forwards. Keep a good posture. And that opens up that angle of my back leg and my knee then goes past my ankle for the front leg. But now I do get a really good stretch into that hip flexor. Don't I? Yeah, I do. And again, what I've found is that if I have my toes on the ground at that kind of right angle, you can, you can see on the video, unfortunately you podcast people can't, I get a good stretch. But if I put my toes down flat on the ground, okay, so I've got a straight line going all the way through my leg into my toes, I, nothing happens on my hip flexor. I can do this and it doesn't feel like I'm stretching my hip flexor at all, okay? Whereas I know if I put my toe up and did that, I'd be, ah, <laughs> okay. So again, look at your body angles and what's happening if you don't feel the stretch. Uh, next up is your shoulders, so arm in front of you, cross your body, hold it in place with your other arm and just that kind of force against you uh, should give you a little stretch in your shoulders. I've definitely, I, I mean I have flexibility issues, I've talked about this, but talking to, spoken about this before, how I've got issues in my shoulders, but there's something weird going on with a constantly in a state of, like I've just done like a hundred press-ups, I don't know what it is, it's strange. Could be from rowing, but even like after I've taken like one, two rest days, it still hurts. Or not hurts, but it's just like, I can tell that they're sore. And if I try and do a press up, it's actually quite, it's as though I've just done a hundred press ups. So, right. I'm not gonna make the mistake I always, oh, if I know, sorry, forearms next. Oh. So put them in front of you, pray, push your hands together as you bring them down. Okay, so you're pushing each hand into itself. And you should find that your forearms, the underneath of your forearms at least, gets a nice wee stretch from this. And your fingers will get a little stretch as well. Hello. Because um, again, on a session like this one, because it's a full power one, and there is still a chance, like even, even though I'm saying not to pull from the front, that bracing off the handle as you push your legs into the machine, as you brace, that's a lot of force to be taken through your fingers. So you're like this for the whole time, taking a lot of force in it. So a little stretch into your fingers can actually be quite useful. Now this is what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna do biceps first and then triceps. Um, so put your hands behind you as though you're flying, rotate your thumbs outwards and then hold it there. And the reason for this is that by doing this stretch into my biceps, I'm contracting my triceps. Um, that twist is kind of contracting them in because on the opposite side. So what I was finding is that when I was stretching my triceps first and then doing my biceps, my triceps would then afterwards go, oh, there's totally no point in you doing that for us. So to do the tricep, 
hand in the air, down your back, touching your spine, other hand, push that elbow back. So you've got like a straight line going up from your shoulder through your elbow into the sky, okay? Um, go straight up. And then just by getting that back and feeling your hand going a little bit further down your spine, you should feel as though that tricep is getting a nice wee stretch. I certainly am. And this time I'm not gonna undo it. I'm gonna do the biceps, change arms. Whoa, there we go. And that gets a chance for them to get in there. So I was holding my arm in place like my left arm, I could feel I could feel is quite tense. So my biceps probably getting a little bit of a hit here, but hopefully not as bad as I'm doing the other way around. So, right there you go. So that's it done for me. Um, you don't have to stop stretching there, of course. If you have other stretches you want to do, if you want to do any of these for longer, it's your body. You know what you need to do to it. Okay, but these are just handy guided stretches to go through. Let's do a rundown. So my watch is beeping at me. So let's end workout um, today. Now a little bit lighter because it was well a little bit shorter, obviously because it was only. Um, however many minutes worth of rowing. However, uh, 346 total calories burnt in today's session, but 267 of them were just from the effort, okay? So that was only, what, five times 90 is, what, five minutes? That's only, is that only seven minutes worth of work we did today? No, I can't be right. Is that right? Seven and a half minutes worth of work. Um, but because of like the, the warm up, those seven and a half, the cool down periods and the, the, the cool down as well, or the, the recovery periods or whatever, you're actually you're putting your body through quite a lot of work today. So even though it was only seven and a half minutes worth of effort, that was still 267 calories, according to my watch anyway, that I burnt. So that's pretty good, isn't it? But they were hard fought, weren't they? <laughs> those calories were, they, they, we earned that burden today because that was a tough old workout. That was a real... Um, yeah, top endy one. The end of that, I mean, it probably, it, it still wasn't as tough as week three, session three. That still goes down, I, I think, in my books, is that like last couple of intervals or some of the, in terms of these roll on workouts, anyway, some of the toughest ones I've done. Um, but those last three or four strokes, getting down to like 130 pace for me anyway, in that last interval, that was a lot of hard work and really rewarding. I mean, to see, that's just, at the end of all that, um, to see 1.30 on the, the clock, to know that I hadn't given in, that I hadn't said, oh, I'm starting to get fatigued, and I actually got... Because with 30 seconds to go, my body was screaming at me to stop. It was saying, you know what, you could possibly just kind of slow down, you could... No one will know, um, or whatever, apart from the fact that all my data's on screen. Um, but I went, no, 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 I'm going to push here, and that's what I was saying, right, increase the power from your legs, but keep the rate the same. And you do that for the next 15 seconds, and then you hit that 15 seconds to go, and you increase the rate for five seconds. And then you increase the rate and the power together. And then that sees you home for only 10 seconds. We can all manage 10 seconds of something awful, <laughs> which is what those last kind of five or six strokes were, because I was putting everything into it. But it's really rewarding. That's the thing about the concept too in rowing, is that you see on this monitor in front of you, it says in big numbers how fast you're going. And it's really, you're going to go, Aga, and you're chasing that little bit faster, that little bit faster. And you get that dopamine hit when it happens. So when I looked up and saw um, 137 for the first stroke, I'm like, yeah, I'm going faster. Then 135, I'm like, yeah, 134, 3, 2, 1. And then I was like, 130, I'm like, yeah, that's amazing. And you, you forget. It's not that you forget, because obviously you're going through quite a lot of work. But you're, you're, that part of your brain starts to shift towards wanting more of that dopamine success hit of like, I'm going faster, I'm managing it. And it's almost like the part of your body that's shouting at you saying, hang on, is this not quite a lot, is getting suppressed by the, yay, we're doing it, we're doing it. So that's the point of a session like this. This is why you try and train yourself to sprint to an end and all this kind of stuff. It's so you can get used to it. You can learn how it feels when you're going faster. You can be rewarded by going faster. And the fact that that last interval, I was going one point, two seconds faster than any of the other ones. And that was at the, very, at the very end when I was tired. I still managed to go faster. That's really rewarding and it shows that everything pays off. And for me, it shows that this 1K plan is entirely doing its job for how I want it to work, okay? And that's the point is that really, this is about making you faster, but it's also about making you able to hold on to the pace, to be able to get through this, because there's no point being really fast for the first one minute of a 1K row, and then the next two minutes you can't hold on to it, because either your your physical fitness is gone, or your your head's just gone, Patoing! I'm not going to hold on to this anymore. So I, I could I could sit here and just get you to do 100 meter sprints full whack that's going to give you um, that little bit more power from the legs you'll probably be able to like do the first two three hundred meters of a, of a 1k really really fast because of all the 100 meter sprints but if I don't give you the physical um, if I don't give you the power the fitness and the mental strength to get through this 1k it's pointless and that's kind of what I think uh, is the value for me doing this 1k plan and when I say value I really hope that you do see the value in this because um, 
I know I said this in, in yesterday's session, but I did read something somewhere saying, oh, of course, there's all this free stuff online nowadays, but it's worth nothing because it's free. It's that guy from Yorkshire again. Um, and I really hope that's not the case. I really hope you're enjoying this. So there you go. Right. So we're done for week three. Woohoo. So, um, so I just bit my lip again. So what that means is that there's one full week of proper, proper training left on the 1K plan. And then the last week is kind of a, a taper prep week to do your final row. Now, your final row, uh, I will describe when we get there, but it's basically, obviously we're training for a 1K row, so that can be what, what it's for, okay? However, I've got something else in mind, uh, which I'm hoping will be a little bit more revealing, at least for you folks at home and for anybody that doesn't want to do a 1K row. Because if you don't want to do a 1K row, you don't have to do it, but hopefully I'm going to give you something that you can do that you can go, wow, that worked, okay? It's proof. Okay, so thanks very much for being part of this uh, rowing session, whether you just, just did this one or whether you're doing the 1K plan. Thank you very much for putting up with me because um, obviously pff, I don't put up with me that often. Um, and I will see you in one of my many, 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 many other videos I have up here. Please take a look. There are hundreds of workouts here going all the way back to 2018 when I started this whole thing in when I was rowing out of a CrossFit gym and I was called something else. They're all still up here um, going all the way back. And even if it slightly different looking John with a beard or when I've got a little bit of a bigger tummy um, or whatever the sessions themselves are all great value so do take a look through the history of this channel and kind of go oh wow it's all grouped into playlists okay so you can go back and go I want a tough row today I want an easy row I want a, a tempo mid tier uh, row they're all here for you to pick and choose from so just because one was done like four years ago doesn't mean it's not got any value and it might actually be worthwhile taking a look at it and going crikey he didn't he spoke a lot less back then and you probably enjoy it more <laughs> so uh last thing to say is just the hashtag that i like to throw out towards the end of a video just to keep you honest and make sure you stay all the way to the end and what have we spoken about today that really um uh oh i'm at a loss as to something that we've kind of I've really spoken about that's kind of i did have a little rant but that's the same um uh, let's just do free is good okay let's stay stay with that or oh, free guy I could always do free guy and they'll just jump on the ryan reynolds bandwagon um there's another ryan reynolds um and um hugh jackman are probably the two movie stars that i'd most like to meet if i had the chance i think both of them in fact together because they're really funny when they're together i think they'd be great folks to meet um great kind of uh actors to to meet yeah i think yeah so maybe he'd maybe ryan reynolds would like to to buy row along next he's already bought a football team maybe he'd like to buy me you can own me i'll sit in the corner of your room and i'll i'll say you look at your body you don't need to row so yeah so let's just go for that hashtag free guy we'll go for that for the hashtag um and then i'm gonna go so it's a friday which means it's spaghetti bolognese day so i'm gonna go cook a big bowl of spaghetti and a big uh, dollop of bolognese on top i'll have a uh, what i've got got um my zero percent guinness is my drink of choice tonight which oh it's so nice um and yeah and then we'll probably watch um sandman the yeah on netflix we'll probably watch that tonight but yeah so tell me about your plans what you're doing for the weekend i am taking uh the weekend off pretty much i'm going to do a little bit of high rocks training um but then i'll be back ready bushy tailed on monday for week four session one of the 1k plan until then take care be well.